Welcome to another episode of So Comfort with Amanda. I'm your host, Amanda, and I'm excited you're here today to learn a little bit more about the world of sewing and how to paint with fabric. Today, we're gonna to continue our two-part series on how to make this beautiful baby quilt. Uh, we're gonna add the borders, the inner and the outer, and show you how to measure them. Now, something I didn't mention before is the way you prepare your fabric matters. So if you wash and dried your quilt, then you're also gonna need to wash and dry whatever your border prints are. So I highly recommend doing all that at the same time. So it's the same water temperature and the same shrinkage rate. Um, so I recommend using a solid and a print or two solids for your borders. You want to have a pop of color and you want it to have a strong sense of presence. So I'm going to use uh, the yellow as my inner border and then this beautiful floral as my outer to give it a strong sense of edging and presence. So I'm not going to turn around the camera so that you can see how I'm going to cut this border. All right, so here at the cutting table, and we're gonna go ahead and bring the salvage into your view. Do, 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 do. Okay, so the first thing we have to do whenever we make a border is if we have washed and dried our fabric, then we need to straighten it up. Even if you don't, a lot of times you still have to straighten it up because um, if you buy it from a hobby store, a lot of them don't have straight instruments like a rotary cutter. To, cut with so it's kind of imprecise so always make sure you have a precise edge before you start doing your actual border cutting now this part because it is a crib size quilt does not require us to measure our size before we cut our actual border so I am going to get my rotary cutter to behave <laughs> okay so I'm going to start with four cuts and the measurements are gonna sound a little odd, but we want our quilt to be a little longer than wide because this is for a crib or toddler bed. So we're gonna cut a five inch side border and we need two of them. So two, four, five inches. Make sure top and bottom are straight and aligned and keep your rotary cutter vertical as you cut through. Um, this is my favorite. It's by Ofla. It is a pizza cutter style. I find that I don't lean nearly as bad with it as I do the traditional style. So we're going to cut two five inch borders and these are for the sides of your quilt, which will be put on first. Okay. All right. So take your five inch pieces and set them to the side. Now we're going to do five and a half inches and a half for our inner borders, or I mean for our top borders. Now our top borders are five and a half for the, to give us that extra inch, but the optical illusion of it's still square. You can also do um, six inches if you want it to be 51. Um, just make sure that you do it, you increase your border size in proportion. There's my five and a half. I'm gonna do the same thing, two, four, five, and leave that half there so I don't have to remeasure it. Cut on the five, okay. All right, now set those aside and get your inner border. My inner border is gonna be the same yellow that's in the actual quilt. It's already been cut once, so I don't have to even up the end. All I have to do is make sure that wherever I line it up, both layers are on the straight line. Okay, this has already been cut. Now this one is the exact same size, no matter what, um, in it, for the inner border. And that is going to be a three inch cut, two, three. That one's pretty easy to eyeball. Um, and once you get over four inches, it, you really should, you, you really should count the grid because I have accidentally cut it wrong when I didn't have any extra fabric and had to start over. Yeah, yeah. That might be how I figured out the five and five and a half inch border on the sample quilt I showed you. Okay, it's exactly how I did it. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, and you need four of these, one for every side. Okay. So that's all three, I mean all four, three inch cuts. And you'll notice I did not cut the salvage off because at this point it does not matter. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and four. And if you do have a thread hanging, that's fine. So you're gonna take and put two of them to the side because these are gonna go on top of your quilt and we're not gonna cut them until we actually add the side borders, okay? So now we wanna find the long side of our quilt, which is this. And we're going to measure it and see how long it is. Please use a hard surface with nothing under it to do this part. If you do not, you may not get an accurate measurement. This is 34 and a half inches. And this side is also 34 and a half. When you use a quarter inch foot, you are more likely to have the same uh, measurement. If you use a tape mark, it may be different. I will go ahead and just straighten up the seams slightly, cut off the threads. It's just this one little spot here. Hardly any problem there, but just clean that up, clean off the threads. That'll allow our border to attach much nicer. And you won't have to pull or guess. Um, we're going to do the same thing over here, and you'll notice that this one actually needs to be trimmed up. Okay. It just means that when I cut something or I pieced it, it just got off slightly, and that's okay. Happens a lot. Not a big deal. Your rotary cutter is your friend. Okay. So now, we are actually not going to cut these at 34 and a half. And... I am actually gonna cut them at 35. I like to have a half inch of slop just in case, but you don't want so much slop that you are accidentally pulling your quilt out of shape. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off the salvage because the salvage does not count in my final cut for piecing. Done, cut off my salvage. Measure this against the end of my board. By the way, if you're wondering what print this is, this is called Grunge by Moda. It's one of my favorite solids um, because it is technically a print on a solid fabric. So the back is, um, the, the um, cross hatches only appear on one side. And, but unlike a regular solid, it doesn't show steam marks and flaws in the actual fabric as much um, and it gives a nice texture to your quilt so go ahead and cut those long pieces at 35 and we are done with our cutting for the moment so now we're going to take this and you can it's your choice if you want to pin or not you can use some pins and pin it here or you can take it straight to the sewing machine and start sewing that inner border to the long side of your quilt all right we're going to go ahead and attach our first border to the long side and you're just going to put it under your needle and start no need to tie it off guide along your quarter inch if you did put pins in it like I did, please go ahead and stop and pull the pins out. As you get better, you can take the pins out before you get to that crossing. Just like that. It's always good, even if you do pin, to check your alignment and make sure you're in the right spot against your actual quilt. down just like that the 
there's no reason the back stitch because you're going to catch be caught by seams on all sides once the quilt is finished so go ahead and just cut it and you're going to go ahead and take it over to the iron and press out the border i've actually already done the other side you're going to press the border i mean the quilt to the border and press both sides so that you have a nice precision edge. So like I said, just press out. About 10 seconds. Do it the entire way down. Make sure you pull that border out just a little bit as you go. Pull it out as you go that'll keep you from accidentally ironing your quilt under flip it over the quilt not the iron flip it over and press out and make sure you have a nice clean press all the way down so i'm back here at the cutting table. I have already attached the long side of the three inch border and we're going to go ahead and square it up. I've made sure that my binding is square with the horizontal part of my mat as well as the vertical and I'm lining up my rotary cutter, I mean my ruler, so that I can take my rotary cutter and trim off that excess half inch. We know that we cut this a half inch long um, so that we didn't have any issues. Now, you could cut it the right exact length in the beginning, but I just find that this is easier when you're starting to quilt. All right, so now the next thing I'm going to do is check and make sure that my block is pretty much straight on the other end. And you'll see this yellow is just a hair longer. So we're just going to take a nice little trim here with the rotary cutter just to make sure the binding goes on more smoothly. So now we need to cut our short borders, our top and bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and measure, and I'm sorry it goes off screen, but I'm starting at the one. And it goes to 31 inches. So now let's turn it around. Again, you want to use a hard surface for this measuring. And we're going to look at the end and we are also at 31 inches. So now we're going to go ahead and cut our borders for the short side of the quilt. Now we know it's exactly 31. So you have the option of cutting it at 31 or doing what I did before. Like I said, I just do that for my own sanity because I've cut something a half inch short before. Um, so I do like to minimize the number of times i'm setting out my rotary cutter and my ruler i prefer to cut two at once so i'm just measuring this with flush with the end with the one i mean the zero and for my own sanity i'm going to cut this at 31 and a half knowing full well i'll be coming back and cutting off a half inch um, but again this is just i know that my measurement is correct okay so we dispose of these and now we're going to attach our short bindings, I mean my short borders, to top and bottom, press out the seam, and then we'll measure out the outer border. Okay, so here we are back at the sewing machine, and we're gonna go ahead and just put this against our quarter inch foot and sew the short border to the top and bottom of our quilt. Got it with your left. I keep the fabric together with my right when I don't pin. Um, this one's short enough that I didn't see any need to do that. But again, feel free to pin as you need to. You will gain skill every single time that you sew. And it really does sometimes help your peace of mind and knowing that 
your fabric isn't going to walk away from you. Okay. Again, this is an inner border, so there is no reason to backstitch the ends unless you just feel more secure doing that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Flip our quilt around. There we go. Line up our border with the other inner border. Get it flush. Lower our pressing foot. I am going to backstitch because I accidentally started a little too far from the edge. Um, but that is, again, not necessary unless you just do what I did, put the needle down in the wrong spot. Um, I know some machines have a manual needle down. Mine is automatic because it's digital. So it just depends upon your machine how you do that stuff. But how you do that stuff doesn't materially make a difference. So we're going to go ahead and keep on straightening everything up. Lining it up, making sure we're in a good place. The reason I straightened that earlier is so that I knew that this border was going to be as straight as humanly possible without any intervention. My quilt decided to twist. <laughs> so just take your time. You can go as slow or as fast as you like. Um, speed comes with skill and skill comes with making more quilts. So if you're a beginner, don't feel like you have to go as fast as I go, but I don't recommend going like this because you'll find the fabric likes to run away from you more. So a nice steady pace is what I recommend. Oops, my needle just broke. So we'll go ahead and fix that. Oh, actually I ran out of thread. So um, I will be back in a minute. Okay, so I'm jumping back on now because this is actually a really good point and a really good lesson. So when you're quilting and if you run out of thread like I did near the end or just anywhere inside your quilt, what you want to do is make sure you test your tension and pull your bobbin thread up on a scrap piece of fabric before you actually start sewing on your quilt again. Otherwise, you might wind up with some stitching that you don't like and have to pick out. This just makes sure that you've got all of your tensioners caught properly, your bobbin is proper. So see our tension here is even on top and bottom, which is what we want to see. So now we can go ahead and go back to our quilt. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can do a tack stitch, a back, actually, or a back stitch, which is what I'm going to do right now. Or you can just back up about two inches over the, uh, and sew over the original seam. And that'll just secure it so that you're not worrying about whether or not those seams are going to come apart. Now, I will go ahead and cut all those threads out um, just to prevent bulk and that stuff from messing with my actual sewing going forward. I mean, quilting going forward. Okay, so now we're headed over to the ironing board. All right, so as we did on all the others, we're going to go ahead and press our seam out to the border on the back side first, move down our quilt, and again just iron out that on the back side, flip it over, iron on the top side just to make sure that you didn't accidentally get a pinch where you didn't want it, and to set that crease. I apologize I am right-handed. <laughs> uh, I'll try to put the iron down on this end now. Okay. So you can see me flip over that quilt. And this is just um, a step that makes your quilt lay nicer and prettier. And it allows you to have a more accurate measurement when you're putting on your borders. And it makes it just work so much better for whoever's going to quilt your quilt, whether that's going to be you or a professional like myself. Um, there are many quilters out there that offer services um, or you can do it, especially this size, you can do it on a domestic machine. Um, 
just make sure that you're following the manufacturer's directions on the batting for how close your stitching is once you get to the quilting portion. Okay, so now that's done, we're gonna go straighten up those edges and cut new borders. All right, back at the cutting table, and I wanted to show you a different technique for squaring up the corner. This is a six and a half inch square that acrylic ruler that you can get pretty much at any quilting store. If you don't have a large mat, you're working on a floor or a kitchen table, this might be easier for squaring up corners, which is what we're doing. So you can just put this on your fabric and square it up with the edges and then trim your border that way. Sometimes it goes a little faster because you're not using your big mat to make all of your <clears throat> precision cuts and making sure that they're all straight. This one's pretty straight, but it has a stray edge, I mean thread. In theory, whichever end you started on should already be flush, but just in case, it's always good to check with the square. And these come in all sorts of different sizes, different brands. Ofla just happens to be what I was gifted by my mom for Christmas one year. Yeah, I got, my mom's a, sewer, a quilter too. I actually learned from her and I've taken several cl classes since, um, but you could say it runs in the family. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and cut that or outer border. And again, we're gonna use our long edges first, not our short edge. So this is, you can find your long edge because it's now got, excuse me, this L shape here. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we measure that on a hard flat surface, just like before. And if you don't have a large enough mat for your quilt, you can use a metal ruler or yardstick like this that you would get at your local hardware store. This one came from Home Depot, I believe, or maybe Lowe's. I'm not sure, but you can measure it this way. The only problem is you may not be quite as accurate because you use your fingernail or some sort of marking device to measure it. And this is how I learned to cut an extra half inch because this is telling me that I am 39 and three quarters inches. But if I measure it on my table and my mat, I'm getting five eighths of an inch. So that's why I'm saying I always cut an extra half inch because there is some slop just from human nature and from the way that the fabric pulls, um, the way that it went together. So I'm gonna cut a 40 inch border just to make sure that I am cutting it correctly for this quilt. And then I'll just trim it down like I did earlier. So let's go ahead and grab our two borders, outer borders. I've already cut off the salvage on one end and I'm gonna go ahead and stack these flush. That way I get two cuts at once. You can cut up to four pieces of fabric with a fresh rotary blade. Do understand that as you cut more than one layer, you are cutting more than one piece of fabric, which actually will dull your blade faster. Um, but it is, if you are pressed for time, it is a valid technique and it's one that I employ a lot. Just recognize that you are making two cuts or four cuts or however many on your blade and your blade will wear out faster. So here we go, 40 inches cut. Now we're gonna go ahead and just attach this to the long side of our quilt, just like we did for the inner border. All right, go ahead and place your border as flush as possible with the edge of your quilt. Put down your presser foot, and this time go ahead and tack or back stitch. Um, tacking is also called tiny stitches, but be careful, it can come down your feet dogs. If it does, just do what I did, lift up the presser foot, pull it out of the feet dogs, and start again. Um, to prevent that, you can hold the ends of your thread as you're going, especially on an older machine. These digital machines make it difficult to do that um, because they tuck the threads down inside when you start a new project okay 
whenever you use the cutter, excuse me. All right, so just go ahead and in theory, this should be as straight as possible because you are already, because you already cut it. Just cut a nice or so a nice steady pace. I'm probably going a little faster than a beginner, but that's okay. I've been doing this a long time. Um, actually, like I said, my mom taught me when I was five to hand sew and I learned how to machine sew at eight because I wanted to make Barbie quilts. Yep, Barbie needed a new blanket. So she gave me a big old bag of scraps and off I went making blankets and fashion clothes and all sorts of things, just experimenting. And that's the nice thing about quilting. Um, you, it's so easy to learn because it's a lot of straight stitches to start with. It's very forgiving. Your same ripper is your friend. And you have, when you're done, you have something beautiful to show, which is why I love calling it painting with fabric. Because I'm not always about crazy amounts of blocks. I'm spending tons and tons of time being precise with these itty bitty piecing i mean they're gorgeous and my hats go off to the women and men who can make those amazing quilts that you see in shows but i love making gifts for people and i love doing things that are simple that anyone at any skill level can follow and that's why the idea of this baby quilt um, i love sharing it with you after i started making them for the church because it was something that you could do for your local church, um, foster care group, or a baby present. Um, present for up to probably four, anyone who has a toddler bed or smaller. Course, there's lots of charities out there that take these project linus is one that is all over the united states so if you do love making quilts and blankets and you don't have somebody in mind for it you might look at project linus and see if there's a drop off location near you i live near the rockwall texas one so i drop mine at rockwall sometimes And yes, I did put both borders on, um, and then we'll go over to the ironing board. I try to be as efficient as possible. I don't want to go over to the ironing board more times than I need to. <laughs> and I do that whether I'm filming or not, because well, like I've said before, pressing is not my favorite step, but it is so necessary to make a beautiful project. Okay. So here we go estimate the end oh i forgot to tack this one that's okay your binding will catch it actually if you're doing long arm quilting like i am you base the side first so it'll catch it that way too all righty so time to go over to the ironing board all right this is your final press for the long side and we're going to go ahead and pull out that binding again or i mean border again press to the border All right, so something I forgot to say is this was the five inch border that I attached to the long side because the five, we wanted to be slightly narrower than tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that square method again because I find that to be actually a little faster and easier to use my square ruler than to use my long ruler. Caveat, this is the five inch border, not the five and a half. I am currently trimming up. These are very subtle changes on the, um, the one that I started with. You may not need to square it up at all. I just do to make sure that my borders go on nice and evenly. Square it up. Verify that final corner. Again, it should be square, but every so often it's not. And every so often your rotary cutter is getting dull and you need to change out the blade. 
you'll know it by how many times you have to redo a cut. <laughs> you can also hear it in the quality of the cut, how if it sounds like a hot knife through butter, then you're good. If it sounds like you're sawing, then it's time for a new blade. Okay, so go ahead and put this on that zero. Measure it against the same line all the way down. We are 40 inches square. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm measuring against my six mark just because uh, and this one is just slightly shy it's like a millimeter okay so 40 inches is what you should cut um, if you're like me and you just want to make sure that you have it 100 percent square you can do 40 and a half um, just to make sure that you are having no issues and again this is the five and a half inch border that goes on top and bottom i have cut off the salvage already um, i actually did it on both sides this time because i was just being trying to be efficient <laughs> something i didn't mention earlier is that almost all fabric comes for quilting comes off of a folded bolt you do want to make sure that you are in cutting the um i'm sorry pressing out that center crease before you cut and the reason i say that is because i have seen times when you thought you were cutting a border a specific size and it was a quarter inch off because of you were just finger pressing out that crease so make sure you always press it out first Okay, so I cut this at 40 and a half just for my own sanity. I'm going to go ahead and take it to the machine and attach the outer border to top and bottom. All right, back at the sewing machine, and I'm going to go ahead and show you a quick back stitch version of this stitch. It uses the reverse button on my machine. And you just take two two or three stitches forward, two or three stitches back, and then continue on. So that's a back stitch versus a tack stitch. A tack stitch is sometimes called tiny stitches, which is just the same type of idea. Is you're taking the stitch on top of itself. Okay, and then go ahead. Um, these are your two final seams. That is why I'm back stitching them at least at the start. I don't always remember at the end, but if I do it at the start, then I know that my two corners are, two or four corners are strong. If you have a different technique for cutting that you like, feel free to leave it in the comments and I can practice with that and see what I like. You can use a pencil and ruler, regular ruler and scissors to cut. It's not nearly as precise as a rotary cutter. I honestly, um, you know, Ofla is a little more expensive than Fiskars or some of the Stritz and store brands, but I find that their, blade, that their um, quality is worse. A little bit extra money um, i've had that one for at least 10 years but again i know quilting is an investment when you get started so work with the tools that you have work with the tools that you can afford and build up your stash as you go don't feel like you have to do everything at once just like this pink fabric is from a hobby store and it's one of the quilting lines so i know that it's better um, but not as perfect long wearing as the Moda grunge that I'm attaching it to. But again, it's for a gift and for somebody to use and enjoy. Um, and it's perfect for my budget. And perfect for this butterfly. I really love the idea of the butterflies surrounded by roses. Uh, roses are actually one of my absolute favorite flowers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So I think it's more fun to do a quilt that you actually absolutely love. And I feel like your, your love for your fabrics comes across to the person who receives it. So don't worry about how fancy your quilt is or how perfect your lines and seams are. Make it with love because a gift made with love, in my opinion, is the best gift of all. All right, we're almost there. You actually can't see it, but I'm using my right hand to guide the fabric at the other end. And if you want to see the back stitch again. Okay. We are now attached and we're going to do our final press and final squaring up and your quilt will be done. All right, back at the cutting table, let's go ahead and use our small square to square up the corner. Uh, make sure that you have an extra inch or so between your border and the size of the square that you pick just so that you have a lip to hold with your hand. Okay. Square that up. We'll go ahead and check the outer corner, although keep in mind that doesn't matter until you actually do the binding. Um, you'll square this up again once you do your actual quilting. Do make sure that the whole quilt is supported so that it is not pulling when you are doing the squaring up at any time. If you need to move your mat to the floor and lay out the quilt to square it up that way, then that is the best way to do it for you. Um, and make sure that your quilt is again supported and not pulling. Looks like we're good to go. All right, and there you have it. One toddler size, nine inch square baby quilt. Okay, so we're gonna have to show you that finalized project one last time. You have a three by four grid and a three inch border. The top is five and a half and the sides are five. Your finalized project is roughly 40 inches by 49 and a half, which makes it perfect for a baby quilt or a toddler bed. So I hope that this project has been fun, that you have enjoyed it. You've learned a little bit more about how to attach borders and how to use a large print fabric in a way that is beautiful and simple. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe to the channel. So comfort with Amanda. Until then, I hope that you will continue to paint with fabric.